everybody and welcome to this September bullet journal plan with me video. This will be my first full inspired theme this year and I'm super excited to share it with you. But let's first start by flipping through the previous month. My August theme was this light sea creatures inspired one but this time we're gonna go a little bit darker with the colors and I also have so many new pages and ideas to share with you as always. But okay, so let's start from the September cover page and I wanted this first spread to be pretty eye-catching this time. I took out my gouache paints that I've been experimenting with recently and we're gonna paint this foolish flower and leaf arrangement. I know this looks pretty intimidating in the beginning but going everything through one step at a time will make it a bit easier to approach. So I always start with some pencil guidelines and I'm mainly focusing on the bigger flowers and leaves in this point. We'll cover the background with dark paint later and add the rest of the details on top of it so we don't really need to focus on all those smaller details right now. I've really been practicing drawing flowers this year. It really wasn't my strongest point and I'm quite positively surprised how much you can improve in just a few months if you just keep practicing. I know these are still not perfect by any means, but they are already a lot better than what I was able to do in March, for example. So I just wanted to share that to maybe motivate you a little bit to just keep practicing if there's something you like to be able to draw. I'm sure you'll eventually get there and I think a bullet journal is the perfect place for all those practice drawings. So anyway, to be able to draw these, I went through a lot of pictures of real flowers and it also might be helpful, especially in the beginning, to look through other flower drawings as well. I wanted there to be a few of these different types of bigger flowers and then I just wanted to fill the background with some smaller and easier ones. But now that the pencil sketches are done, it's time to start to add a bit color to these. I wanted this monthly theme to have a very warm fall type colors. So I was using a lot of peachy and warm brown tones and then combined those with some super dark greens. I leave all the main gouache paint colors I'm using to this screen. So if you happen to own some similar colors, you're able to follow along. Some of these flowers require some layering with the colors and I was kind of jumping from flower to flower here while I was waiting the first layers to dry. I think the fun part of gouache painting is how easily you get very pigmented colors and you're also able to layer them very easily but then you can also get a very watercolor-like finish if you mix a bit more water to the paints and that was kind of what I was doing here especially in the beginning to create all these light washes of colors. Then you can see me starting to add the dark green to the background. I was just going around these bigger flowers and covering everything else. You could also have done this in the very beginning and paint everything on top of it, but you might have to layer the colors a few times if you do that since the color is pretty dark. Also, it might be a little bit more difficult to work with those lighter colors on top since blending them will kind of pick up the background color as well. So you might end up with some green in your lighter colors if you do that. So I personally thought that drawing the bigger flowers first was the best way to go. So I also wanted to add some of these colorful bigger leaves. These are super inspired by rubber plants, I guess they are called. And then I just basically kept adding very simple flowers and leaves to the background until I was happy how everything looked like. Thank you. 
in all honesty this took so much time in real life as you can probably guess and the end result looks kind of messy to me a little bit I could have definitely spent some more time on the final details but I decided to instead just clear some of the lines with a black micron I think it helped to define some of the outlines especially in the flowers a little bit but then I really had to move on because I had the whole rest of this theme to finish I had to cut this picture a little bit to fit it to my notebook and then I just attached it with a double-sided tape which is still my favorite way to attach stuff to my journal and then we just have the monthly title and small calendar to add here on the next page to finally finish up this whole cover spread But yeah, so that's that and let's now move on to the monthly overview or calendar spread and I started this by writing the title again and then drawing a very small and minimal monthly calendar. I tried to change my font slightly this month because even though the cover page was super decoration heavy, I wanted to create this almost minimal style to some of these other spreads and I thought this slightly thicker wavy font would really complement that style. I usually create all my titles with the 01 or 02 size micron, but this month to make it a little bit thicker, I went with the size 05. Then we are getting to the fun part of this video because I decided to try out this new style of decorations which will probably seem a little bit weird at first but just bear with me okay? So I basically decided to draw some shapes on my computer and then I just printed them out so I had all these different colors and shapes to play with. You could of course always create different shapes like these with pens, paints or even different colored papers but this way you're able to to create just the colors and shapes you want and all these colors will look really smooth as well. I'll add both of these shape collections to my website so you can also download them for free. I will link that in the description just if you're interested to use similar technique in your own journal. I also created some of these shapes with just a watercolor paper and paints because I thought having this watercolor texture in some of them would create a nice contrast. So I just cut out some of these and then created this vertical arrangement system here on the second page. And then I also wanted to add a small color palette above my monthly title. I happen to have sticker paper at home since I sell stickers on my Etsy shop. Link is in the description by the way. But you could always print these on a normal copy paper and then just use a glue or tape to attach everything to your notebook. Sticker paper would probably make things easier, but it's not necessary by any means. But after this calendar, I left this vertical column to the next page for my content list, which I use every month to track my YouTube and Instagram content stuff, like what I need to film and edit and so on. You could use this space for a monthly master to-do list, or maybe to list some important days if a social media tracker is not something you need. I think these decorations together added such a pretty minimalist look to this whole calendar spread. This kind of style is something that I personally enjoy and it also incorporated all the fall colors of this month. I also drew this simple plant decoration to the bottom left corner and then our second spread is finally done. So moving on now, the next spread will be completely reserved for some simple self-care stuff. This first page is actually completely inspired by this picture I saw on Pinterest and I created basically exact the same layout using these different colorful paper shapes again. You could easily change up the color of this to fit any monthly theme, but I went with these warm yellowish tones again to match with everything else. And the point of this page would be to list some good self-care habits and I kind of divided them into these four different categories. So there are the habits that you're already doing and you want to keep doing in September as well. Then maybe there are some that you're already doing but they just need a little bit adjusting. Then I wanted to list some new habits I want to try and then lastly some habits I need to quit. 
The point is not to stress yourself with all of these new habits. I thought this would mainly just be a good place to gather some good habits and spend a little bit time looking them up. And then whenever you have time, maybe you can come back to this page and maybe pick up some of them from here. Then let's move on to the next one. And here I just wrote down a simple, how do I feel question. I thought it would be interesting to answer this question on the first day of September and then answer it again on the last day and see what has changed during the month. Maybe you could even see if some of the new self-care habits on the previous page affected your overall mood in one month. I wanted this page to follow the same style as the previous one, but also incorporate something that would go together with the flower theme on the cover page. So I decided to paint this teeny tiny flower arrangement with the same gouache paints we used before. I first colored this whole thing with the dark green color and let it completely dry before starting to paint these random flower and leaf shapes on top. I didn't use too much time here since this was just supposed to be a quick small decoration so you can get really far with just the most basic shapes and flowers. small painting was done, I paired it with some of these cut shapes again that went together with the colors and created this small arrangement in the top corner of this page again. I think overall this whole spread ended up being such a fun and different idea and I'm really looking forward to fill it. But now it's time to move on and next we have some more monthly planning stuff. I gave this spread the title monthly goals and I started decorating it by adding some more of these shapes to the top part of this page. I think it was always so fun to pair these different shapes and colors together. And then I also drew another leaf decoration here and I did it by using two different sizes of my microns. I don't know if you can pick it from the video, but the bottom line of these leaves is slightly thicker than the top one, and I think it just added a fun look to these leaves. Then let's move on to the actual content of these pages. So I first drew this box where I can write down my main goal for September. Next to it, I added a few places for some secondary goals, but mainly I'm just gonna focus on completing this one thing this month. I feel like I've gotten so much better at actually enjoying reaching my goals after I've started to heavily lower my expectations about them. I really encourage you to try to do the same this month and only pick one main thing you want to focus your energy on. After that, everything else can be just extra credit, but you feel like you could actually meet your expectations, which is much more important in the long run than being able to cross off everything from a mile long to-do list. But then on the next page, I added my usual 15th check-in box, which is just a good chance for you to check in with this page in the middle point of the month when you still have plenty of time to do something about your monthly goals. Then I wanted to create some cute decorations here in the bottom and I chose to go with this super simple cream colored cat. This theme had mostly just flowers and some of those abstract decorations. So I wanted to throw at least one animal in there just to make things more interesting. So I drew out this cat first with a pencil and then I just went over everything with my black micron.
also added some simple plants around the cat so that this corner wouldn't look so empty and finally I colored everything with the lightest layer of my gouache paints again. I think this shows perfectly how light and watercolor-like finish you can get out of them and I honestly can't even tell the difference here. But that cat finally finishes up this monthly goal spread and before we move on to possibly my favorite weekly setup ever, I quickly want to tell you a little bit about this month's sponsor who is once again Skillshare. In case you haven't heard about them, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes for creative people. It's the perfect place to explore new skills, get lost in creativity and connect with other creative minds online. Their classes are meant for learning, so they are completely ad-free and they cover everything from fine arts and illustrations all the way to graphic designing and video production. As I mentioned, I've been experimenting with gouache paints recently and this class called Beyond Watercolors Learn to Paint with Gouache by Leah Goren was a really good introduction class. It highlighted the difference between gouache and other mediums very well, so if this is something you've been thinking to explore too, I highly recommend checking this one out. With an annual subscription, Skillshare is less than $10 per month, but now they are offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description a two-month free trial of premium membership that allows you to freely explore your creativity. All the information is in the description bar as well, and once again, thank you so much for Skillshare for continuing to support my channel. It's always truly a pleasure to work with them. But now let's get started with this Dutch door weekly setup that we're actually going to start by cutting those middle pages. After that was done, I jumped to this new gouache flower pattern. I promise this one is much easier and faster to create than the one in the cover page. And my idea was to use this pattern to frame the whole weekly layout and then use the Dutch door thingy in the middle for all the daily boxes. So I started everything by covering this whole piece of watercolor paper with the same dark greenish color I used in the beginning. And after this had completely dried, I started to paint these super simple white flowers on top. I made the white ones first into these groups of three, and it doesn't really matter if some of your petals turn out lighter than the others, since I think it just adds a bit of variation to this whole thing. After the white flowers, I started to paint some peach colored ones between them and then just started to paint these simple leaves to frame everything. I just kind of kept adding these new elements to this painting one at a time and tried to keep everything pretty simple and balanced. I truly think that a flower pattern like this is a great idea to try out even if you're more of a beginner with gouache paints because you can get away with just the most basic shapes as you can definitely see here. I also wanted to incorporate some of these darker orangey browns again so I finished this painting with some of these dot flowers and also some dark brown leaves. I know this looks much more complicated than it actually is. This was actually super easy and pleasant to create. But after I was happy with the amount of decorations on this painting, I just removed the tapes and cut it in half to attach it to both sides of this weekly layout. Now as you can see, when you flip the pages in the middle, you can enjoy this pattern every week of September without having to draw something new every week. But anyway, I wanted to have a whole separate place for my meal planning stuff this month, so I left this first space here for that. I just wrote the title here on top and then made two columns for lunch and dinner and then I just keep my fingers crossed that this is enough space for me to write them down every day. Then I used the most outer Dutch door pages for the first and last week of September that both have less than seven days in them. I divided this first one into five sections and I'll just combine the weekend here. And then from here, I divided all the pages to four sections on each side. So we have enough room for all the days of the week. 
I also decided to add these small tabs to the wigs so that it's easier to find the current wig and I even added some color to them with the same paints again just to add one more detail to this layout. I've only set up the first week for now but I think you can get the idea so then the last week here only has the days from Monday to Wednesday and I'll set the rest of the days of this week again on the next month's weeklies I've quite enjoyed setting up these slightly different sections for the uneven weeks and I'll probably try to keep up with this system at least for a few more months then this last little column here was the perfect place to add my monthly habit tracker and I used this vertical layout again where I add all the habits to the top with these small signs. I drew them this time with a 003 micron which was maybe slightly too thin but it was the only pen at my table at this moment of filming so I just went with it. <laughs> But yeah, I know this was pretty intense, but at the same time, now setting up all the weeklies is super fast and easy during the month. And I ended up liking this Dutch door layout so much. But before we do the final flip through of the month, we still have one more simple spread to set up, which is of course the monthly review section. I felt like changing this up a bit this month, so after writing another wavy title here at the top, I just wanted to leave some room for a few questions I'll answer in the end of this month. I know finding the time and energy to fill these pages might sometimes be a bit difficult, so just having a few simple sections here might make it a little bit easier. Then we have one last abstract arrangement left and this time I wanted to focus everything around this kind of hanging plant. Again, it took me a while to come up with the shapes and colors I like together. And then I just attached the sticker papers directly to the page and then added some double-sided tape to this one with the watercolor paper. The last thing I kind of wanted to add almost as a bonus section for this month is the September playlist. I don't know why I've never had a playlist on my monthly setups but I thought it might be super fun to find some album pictures here and maybe list some of the songs I was listening the most. I personally think that stuff like this is always the most fun to come back to when you're flipping through your past journals. So anyway, now that's finally it for this whole September blood journal layout. I know it took 500 years as per usual, but I really hope you like this theme as much as I did. This must be one of my all-time favorites. And funnily enough, I think the cover page was actually my least favorite from all of these other more simple designs. This setup will be also available as a digital download on my Etsy shop. And if it's not there already, it will be in the next few days. If you're new here and you'd like to stay tuned for more bullet journaling in the future, please consider subscribing to this channel. It always means a lot. But I think that's it for this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and see you in my next one. Bye bye!